really is the classic throwback. Longtime series fans have been clamoring for. Sonic Mania is a wonderful send up to the Hedgehog's Genesis era and slots in so well with those games. Oh boy, Sonic Mania is an awesome game and it's gonna get reviews. I can't wait for Sonic Forces to come out. Sonic Mania has been claimed to be one of the best Sonic games in history, while also being one of the best 2D platforming games ever in 2017, but for Sonic Forces, it was mediocre at best. Although Sonic Mania is good and Sonic Forces is not terrible or good games, both games have made people be a little bit on one side on either of both games. Okay. I think we're at Real the point talk. where we need to admit that this was never really a great franchise. Nope. Oh! In this video, I will be talking about both Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces, while also talking about his fan base. So while I'll talk about Sonic Mania and Forces, there will be a lot of spoilers for both games. The only time I will not spoil both games is at the time where we talk about his fan base. If you do not want to be spoiled for the both games, here's the timestamp for each section of the video. Here's where we praise the game, this is where we bully another game, this is where we bully the children of the game series. <laughs> In the old days of video games, there was no advanced technology of games looking pretty. There were like only engines that you could use to make games like Ping Pong, Galactica, and Pac-Man. These games were considered um, arcade games. They weren't like games that you could make beautiful graphics like modern consoles. These games had limitations to what they could have. Even for console games, Atari and Nintendo has their own console games that you could play in your home. It was like playing an arcade game inside your house. I mean, you can buy an arcade machine, but they're really expensive. For one thing, the first video game that was ever made was a tennis game called Tennis for Two, made by William Henderbaham. He was an American physicist in Brooklyn Action Laboratory. This game is an amazing thing to see for yourself. So this was made in the 1950s. And now when we look back to 2018 and how games had greatly changed. Back then in the 1980s, 8-bit video games were a thing on console games that had limited animations, limited graphic designs, and it was cheap to make. They were also home to a couple of consoles like the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Sega Master System, and the Atari 7800. Because of this, most games that were made on there were mostly was more on playing the game instead of the story. 8-bit consoles were a big thing because it was something new and everybody was talking about it. The 8-bit games were going along until the 16-bit era. We made the graphics much better, with the characters looking much different, have much likeness, and have a cool look like a picture you took on your smartphone. Now this was a company to consoles on like the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Get it? Cause it's the NES, but super! And the Sega Genesis. This was the Sega console that made them the company what they are today, with Sonic as its mascot. Having blast processing technology for the Genesis, Graphics getting better over the years, like having the N64 change the gaming into the third dimension. The 8-bit video games have been slowly dying when the 60-bit area was going, and after that, the 8-bit games just started to fade away, as well as the 16-bit era too. But, when there were advanced consoles that started to show up though, any dev started to revive both the 8-bit era and the 16-bit era. The 8-bit and the 16 16-bit games were now referred to pixel games. There are amazing 8-bit pixel games that were made to recapture the love of the NES with games like Big Trip Runner, Shovel Knight, Gunpoint, and with other that does the 16-bit style like Splunky give us that amazing throwback to how video games used to be before advanced technology. But when you boil it down to how people talk about these pixel games, there are a lot of 8-bit video games that are most popular. Like even though there are 16-bit video games that exist, most of the time you hear about Shovel Knight, an 8-bit pixel game more times than you can see how many words are typed in the script. <laughs> pixel games are cheap to make. They do have a great animation since the modern technology gives us a feel more movement. But we don't get to see more games that take over the 16-bit era. 
where games have more graphics, background, and look, which I am happy to talk about Sonic Mania, and how the 60-bit game came to please every Sonic fan. Sonic Mania was created by people that made fan games, like for example, Christian Whitehead that was represented as a tax man for the game was the one who made Retro Sonic, a Sonic fan game they used in an engine that was also used to make the finest of 30 games. Christian also did some ports to Sonic games like Sonic 1, 2, and Sonic CD to mobile phones, with Sonic CD to console games and Steam. Funny enough though, Christian Whitehand though made a video suggesting Sega though to make a mobile port to Sonic CD on your phone. And <laughs> what? Sega actually hired him, hired him to do the job. <laughs> Weird, right? Simon Tommy, also known as Softo, was a man that was well known for his own game engine that was used for Sonic Mania called the Head Cannon Game Engine though, used for games so like Sonic Mania to run in a full smooth 60 FPS though, with no uh, frame rate issues though on the screen. And also Pagoda West Games. These are the guys who worked on mobile games which are very fun, like Major Magnet, which is a puzzle platformer which you use the magnet to tra traverse the levels. Another one is Snapper Pals, where you take pictures of some cute animals lovable animals. It really makes it for an app game company to work on a Sega Genesis like Sonic game. They might work on another game console game soon. These three teams were ones who were behind the development of Sonic Mania and it has paid off after the release. There was also a music team named Hyper Potion that made these amazing music for the trailers and the opening cutscenes for Sonic Mania. If you really wanted to listen to their music, I highly recommend you guys check out their YouTube channel. They do wonderful rem remixes of video games. The development for this game started out in 2015. The idea for this is to imagine what does Sega keep making Sega Genesis like video games for modern consoles. The game then was announced in 2016 during Sonic's 25th anniversary. It was set to be released for PS4, Xbox One, and PC for spring of 2017. It was announced when the Nintendo Switch was announced to be released on March 1st that Sonic Mania was also be available for the Nintendo Switch. It was then later pushed back to August 15th for all consoles and PC, but then the release date for a PC user was delayed to August 29th. One month before the release of Cuphead. And then after that though, the game was released on all consoles on August 2015. And then finally, we got Sonic Mania on PC and Steam in August 29th. And we get to see it in its full 60 bit glory. But then there's something happened to Sonic Mania for PC. It was only playable online. But luckily they did fix it to have Sonic Mania to be played offline. Now without further ado, let's get on with the best singing! In Sonic Mania, you start off with Sonic and Tails flying to Angel Island. Why are they going back to Angel Island, you ask? Well, if you don't know, there's a manual that comes with the game if you pre-ordered the Sonic Mania Special Edition. It includes the Sega Genesis with classic Sonic standing on top of it, fake Sega cartridge with a gold ring in it. Oh, fuck. Why did I pre-order this console for sure? This. But the game I pre-order on Steam does have the manual. You just have to right click on Sonic Mania game name and select manual. And there you go, the manual. The manual says that Sonic and Tails arrive on Android island because they were getting some strange reason on some strange source energy. So they arrived on the age island and found some of Robotnik's Batniks flying for some reason with some random hatch out of nowhere picking up some some weird ruby that was probably was a weird energy source that was picking up. But then some strange things were happening. The Ruby was doing some crazy stuff and then Sonic and Tails were teleported to Green Hill Zone. 
is a really great recreation of Green Hell Zone in Sonic 1. With Act 1 and 2 combined into one act. They have the powers from Sonic 3 in there with the regular shield. Except this time, the fire shield and electric shield does some stuff in the environment. They even brought back some of the special rings that were in Sonic 3 in this game too. They even have the checkpoint sparkles if you have 25 rings with you. The special stages and the big rings were taken to a 3D uh, chasing stage inspired by the Sonic CD special stages. They are really fun and I actually love the special stages in here. And I have to say that these and the Sonic CD special stages are probably the best ones in the series. The ones in the checkpoints are the special stages from Sonic 3. <sighs> okay, guys, I have a confession to make. I am not a big fan of the Sonic 3 special stations. Yes, you do have a choice if you want to turn all the blue spheres in red and collect all the rings in the stations to get the golden medallion. Oh yeah, these stations will reward you medallions depending on if you collected all the rings in the stations or not. To be honest, I am not very good at these stages. Sometimes I can't... I can uh, have a tension span no longer than you guys, so, but I do not have much of a fun time doing these. I can struggle it off the special stages song around though, and Sonic 3, but I can't be bothered to be an expert on the Sonic 3 special stages if I'm not much of a master of them. Anyway, so after we traverse this werewolf, let's get to the first boss. The first boss we encounter is the Eggman Sonic 1 inspired like boss. Except in this boss, you hit the parts of the boss so that is in red and has spikes on there. I could say, this boss is really great one as you start off with. This thing changes where you hit it instead and it does a spin attack move. This is a nice easy boss. And now we're on to Act 2. And then we were immediately thrown into this new act though. This actually looks like a new level though from an existing zone. There is a new background, there is the zip line thing so that you can ride along, and there is the uh, fire shoot though that can actually burn a rock to reveal cool and interesting secrets to find. And there is even rock water in this level though, with the um, piranha robots though you can fight. And so we get to the uh, boss for act 2. And Whoa, holy crap! What is this? Is that the death egg robot from Sonic 2? <laughs> okay, okay, I admit that was really clever though. Anyways, the boss for this H2 is actually really cool there. The death egg robot here though will try to uh, hit you with his spiky like arms and throw bombs at you though when you're very far away. The only way you can hit him though is try to jump on his um spiky hands though when he's attacking you to hit him on the top of him. Well, you could easily go under him and attack him though, but the trade-off for this is you can properly lose your rings. After this boss fight, we get to the underground though. See Eggman yelling at his um robotic deadly six. Actually, they're called the heart full of heavies. Robotic then steals Rupee, and now we're in a chemical plant, so. Wait a minute! I thought we were playing Sonic Mania, not Sonic Generations. The stage in Act 1 is actually the same as the original one in Sonic 2, except for the boss at the end. The game is doing a great job though of uh, introducing many bosses like Sonic 3 did. Alright, this one just protects itself with the um, ooze that is in Chemical Blast Zone. And you can get the first hit in the beginning of the fight before the boss falls into the goo. Act 2 is a stage show is not much different and it includes new stage gimmick like brass and blue goo and the green goo that bounces you way up higher into the air. Deep bubble things, which I do like though. Now for the boss, and um... What point do Dr. Robotness may be in the machine? Or Poyo Poyo, if you um interested in Colony Nanas. This mini boss game plays like these two games, and I do enjoy playing these. I always keep going back to these stages to play the Poyo Poyo mini game. And beat his ass. It's fairly easy, I wish it were already, but whatever. And now we're moving on to the next stage. And this is Studio Optimus. And this new 
Stone kicks ass. Those are popcorn machines that pop out of popcorn and make you fly up in the air. Nice reference to the soft popcorn machine. With lots of references sprinkled all across the zone. This is fan of the teleports you inside TP and had you pop out of nowhere. There's even some new enemies for the zone, like the snare robot shoot cars out. There's even some these fly cameras that take pictures of you. And this thing that is like the Sun One enemy, except you can destroy his balls and wait him out. It's now it's time to move on to the boss for this stage. And this is one of the hard boy heavies you fight. You just Oh my god, listen to this music! They put so much effort into this music though, it's like you're actually fighting a criminal on a Road. This is amazing though. Well, all you have to do though is hit the um, blue rocket so we're avoiding the red one so. All you have to do is hit in four rockets and then you'll be done with the stage. Too presto. Now on to Act 2. Now Act 2 Studiopolis is actually really a nice little act. In this one when you enter it, you feel like you're in a big huge um, studio. Like with TVs, though, projecting, cameras, so that are there for recording, a lot of lights, these things, and even some cool enemies that was from Act 1. The boss for Act 2 here is actually really a clever way though. The chicken here though, which was the enemy from Sonic Free and Knuckles, so actually becomes a weather man though. He tells you though what's gonna happen, and tells what the weather is like. One time you're gonna have to uh, hide under Dr. Robotnik's a machine though to be protected. Sometimes you have to uh, force some clouds and sometimes you have to be careful of the window and try to hit them carefully or else you'll get hit by the spikes. Anyway, this is actually a really cool second act boss fight. And now after we're done with that, we'll move on to the next stage. The next stage here is Flying Battery Stone, and this stage is really fun, although it didn't really change that much though from the one in Sonic and Knuckles. But it does have this cool thing though where the uh, electric can actually magnetize up on a ceiling. The music is still epic to listen to. The Act 1 boss is, is a pretty much a mediocre boss. You have this um, trash compressor and you all had to do is jump up there and hit the um, thing blue spot what well, also needs enemies on to act two they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it Nothing much is different from act one and flying batteries though but when you get to act two the music then here it gets more epic. New hazards around the act. Traps that you sink into, but then it comes a boss for act two. Funny enough, this boss was actually inspired for a Sonic bank character called Amulet or Egeti, if you guys like to call that. This boss sucks. <laughs> And here's why. First of all, you have to go on these prepare spinners and hit the robot and spider bot in the part where there's a star on there. Have them hit these spikes. Why can't you do it on barefoot and hit it with your regular spinner? You might be asking. Well, the spinner doesn't even fling the robot further enough. And you have to hit it when the robot is really back to the top. This is one of the crappiest boss fights, but at least we beaten it. And now on to the next zone. The next zone is called Press Garden Zone. So. This is one of the second newest zones in the game. This one is really good. You bounce around on these spring things and have these ink bunnies bouncing around. And these crab robots playing Muggy Moo with a chainsaw instead of a ball. Huh. The music is really nice too. Oh look, it's a phallic imagery. It's a phallic imagery. It's time to go on to the boss. This one has chainsaw, and the only way to stun him is to have him hit these brown hard boxes, or have it hit the ground and attack it before it comes back to senses. And now it's time to move on to Act Two. This one is snowing, and you change the world around you. And you know this um machine though that frees you when you touch it though, and then hurts you. <laughs> No! 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 <laughs> 
Now this thing is a mechanic, and it helps you break through obstacles. There is a nice uh, home to rings, spikes, and springs. You can easily melt them, including the icicle spikes with the fire shield. This station includes new enemies, even the ones that are from Sonic CD. Like the woodpecker that makes the bombs fall off the tree. The woodcutter that you can send out to cut down this huge log. And this robot that has a big white ball that freezes you when you touch it. And now we're going on to X2 boss. And this is the second hard boy highly. But even though if their fiends is catchy though, this one is pure bullshit though. This ninja like robot though will start uh, freezing you though when you get close to it. Even though it's really simple and easy, it then starts becoming a more ha ass hassle um, fight. Hit him a couple of times so then he's throwing out a um, star from uh, Sonic 2. Hit him more and more, he'll then start to free more of these and you have to uh, destroy these so when they're stuck. Even though it's a pretty much interesting boss fight, the screen gets more cluttered though with shit like this. Ugh. Now we'll move on to the next sack. Hello there! Is that an awesome remix I hear? Well yes it is! Welcome to Stardust Speedway Zone, Act 1. This music is my favorite out of all of the Sonic Mania original soundtrack. Today has the new stage mechanics, one you remember from Sonic CD. Get you some new enemies in this act with some old ones from the CD games. Boss is a large version of the new enemies that spawns out some of the smaller versions of himself. While the boss himself shoots out red hot beams, well... It's just pretty much it. I'm a fire in my laser. And now we move on to Act Two. Future. Act 2 of Surf, the Speedway Zone, is a bad fusion version of the stage from Sonic CD. It's actually really cool too, if you like entering a new zone with new stuff in there. It's still the same act as in the CD game. The boss in it is something special. Hey look, there's Metal Sonic! Hey Metal Sonic! <laughs> Ooh, whoops. <laughs> Ooh, well my bad. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Here's the real Metal Sonic. Now this is my favorite boss music in the game. You may see the Japanese boss theme in the Sonic CD Bad Future Starter Speedway Zone. The boss starts out where you like racing him, although Metal Sonic becomes a bitch and hurts you, making you slow down. But, we get to this part of the boss stage, and this is where Metal Sonics are spawning fake robotic sonics. To damage him, you need these robots to spin dash to you, and then you have to spin dash to them before they release their spin dash. It is hard, but when you strike the final hit, you still have to run again. Yeah, it's still not over. After all this running, you get to this part. You have to run away from these spikes traps and hit Metal Sonic while running away. The boss fight is really long though. I actually think it, this one took me like 2-4 to four minutes while playing this boss fight. This is actually really a fun boss fight though. I really love how they have Metal Sonic, well, you know, become this kind of cool like boss. And now it's time to go to Hydroxy Zone. Okay, welcome to Hydroxy Zone. Here we are here in this- ah! This act here plays it's actually like the same one for Sonic 3, but this one has some new um, stage mechanics with hooks. The hooks here uh, raises the water level, take you to a different location of the level, and there's even a secret code though that it has. All you have to do is uh, type in the Sonic and Knuckles cheat code, which is left, 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 right, 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 up, up, up. Then you get this though. <laughs> See? What am I talking about? The Yugi Donkey! It's now time to get to the boss battle. Ooh, this one is very interesting. We're probably gonna start setting these bombs alongside the walls and... Oh! Oh, the music boss music stopped. Okay, never mind then. Okay, now we get to the, uh, thing though. Whoa, 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 hold on a second! Oh my god, we're in a robotics machine! 
Holy shit! This is awesome! Beat the Sage Juice Fire Boss in Sonic 3. Now I can finally select that fat robotic like cheese. And now we beat this act. Now for Act 2. And oh man, this is a really interesting fast act. Going around loop de loop, smash the robotics robots and stuff, spinning on this. And now we're on to the Act 2 boss. Oh yeah, there's even also this whirlpool. Which I forgot to mention. <laughs> this boss here has actually two faces in this one. In this first phase, all I have to do is hit these uh, bomb things and pray for Lord they hit Robotnik. Well, and also make sure you uh, get air bubbles, so because you will lose air if you don't get enough. And then after that, though, and oh, hello there. Act 1 boss! <laughs> oh, I see what they did there. They switched the bosses in this stage. I get it now. And so, after we finished Hydroxy Zone, it's now it's finally time to go to my favorite ever new stage. Marie Saloon Zone, baby! Here we are now riding on Tails Plane and uh oh, look like Knuckles forgot his seatbelt. This act though is the guy chase zone level, where you uh, fly around though on Terra's plane. Mostly though, the plane isn't really perfect. Well, you do get a chance though to move left and right. You don't usually go down though after you just jump, but whatever though. You can still spin dash in this stage. This is an actually interesting stage though. A lot of uh, robotic uh, hawks. I think they're called, and some of these are uh, cactic robots that shoot underneath you if you plan to uh, go under. After this part, you didn't go onto the train. This train is kind of really short. Oh, and then after that though, you can shoot up from the sky and then fight a small boss at the end. Well, this boss though is pretty much hard to uh, beat though. I mean, this one is a cool interesting thing though. This thing just jump out as you go, like it's actually in 3D. But even though this boss is so cool though, sometimes so it can become hard though where to hit it. Sometimes so you think you might hit it though after you jump though, but then you get bounced back. Anyways, on to act 2! This act is really my favorite act in the stage. They're all like these uh, amazing flippers to bounce on. There's the uh, screws that you ride on. This water wave though that you could run on, but you make sure you run on it before it's gone. And this bowl ropa. And these fuckers from Sonic CD. We get to the end of this act, and we get to another one of the third hardboro heavies. This one transforming into one of the three Sonic characters for one of the Sonic games like Fang the Sniper, Bark the Polar Bear, and um, Bean the Dynamite. And if you guys don't know who these guys are, they were all in the fighting game called Sonic the Fighters. This game is like the fighting game, but with Sonic characters. And the thing about this is that there are rings that fly off when, you, when the enemy gets hit. And so this is the part of the video though where I end this level here. Ha <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, you're wrong, sister. There is actually another stage to this. I actually forgot to mention that you could also play as the two characters from the uh, Sonic games, Tails and Knuckles. If you pick as Tails, the beginning opening will have Sonic fly the plane with Tails on top of it. But if you play Knuckles, then there will be a different opening for him as well. It also starts in a different part of Green Hill, so Act 1. This part of the level can teach you how Knuckles climb and glide. I mean, after that though, it just becomes the regular uh, act. Even the bosses and levels are kind of the same if you play as Knuckles and Tails. Tails, as you all know, can fly to high places. It's a part of the levels that built for Tails and Knuckles' ability. Playing these guys was a great way of finding a tournament rules to levels. Of or secrets. Let's get to the Knuckles exclusive Act 1 stage.
the Aqua and the Melusia Saloon Show where playing Knuckles is built around Knuckles' ability to glide and climb on walls. I mean, you're gonna have to use a lot of gliding and climbing to get out of this level. The boss here is gonna be much more different though. I mean, it's the same boss fight though, but it's perfectly much better though. This one though, uh, throws some parts of you though, and making it harder for you to hit it. Well, it's kind of like the um, Mario enemy though, except this is a boss form. It's now time to go to the next stage. Welcome to Oyo Ozu so the Sonic 2 stage. It's actually the same, except it has few stage gimmicks, like the aura that slides you all around the place. But in this one, you can set them on fire with a fire shield. And with this new enemy for the stage. Which is a fucking bitch. Okay, it's time to go on to the boss, so... Ah, oh, okay then. Cool, um, engineer robot. Alright, this boss for wrench. Mostly precise full. Okay, he's cranking his pipe and now. But, okay! Okay, what the fuck? How the hell was I supposed to know that there were spikes up there? This was probably on the screen and then. BAM! You get. You lose your rings. Ah, uh, whatever. We've been in the boss so for Act 1. It's now time to move. Whoa! What's happening here? Wait a minute. Is this a lot of smoke in here? And. Oh, okay then. Put on this level to clear smoke. I see now. Okay, this act is really a nice level. You go around in this act while trying to find a level to clear the smoke away. Smoke drains your ranks. If you don't clear the air, you will die. You can even save yourself to the boso that sinks into your oil. And you can explore there and collect some ranks in there too. Nice search though. Now we're going on to the boss. And this one is a Sonic 2 or your also zone boss. With more room to hit him and stuff. And some new moves and a perfect weak spot. To hit. Now we got that boss done. Now move on to Lava Reef Zone. Lava Reef Zone? What the fuck, guys? What would you put in Lava? That level was awesome. Now Lava Reef Zone here is nothing special though. This is kind of like it a much more improvement over the uh, other one though from Sonic 3. It has some enemies though that were in Sonic 2. I give them that. Go around trying to set out the lava world for these mind bomb things. Oh yeah, mind bomb things. Now it's time to go to the boss. This boss drove into the rocks road, destroying the bridge that was in the rocks. Wait, what? You can only hit him a couple of times so it was on the fall, so we're avoiding some rocks. Watch out for falling rocks. Also, you gotta be careful though, trying not to go into the lava though. Well, the bridge can also break too. Now I want to actually... Okay, I gotta be honest here, I didn't really play much further from Sonic 3 and probably Sonic 3 Knuckles though, so I haven't really know much about the uh, original act though. So here's about act 2, what I know. These things here are like the uh, treadmill, you have to run really fast to catch some speed. There is a switch you can use to uh, change the direction. Beyond the boss, there are two different bosses in this stage, also they're both hop oral heavies. If you play as Sonic or Tails, you fight the uh, purple one that's right on Big Q's motorcycle. That's actually clever. He performs some cool ass tricks, and the crowd goes wild! Now let's take a look at a Knuckles boss battle. This one is pretty much different though. You have to go on to a different round to take on Knuckles boss battle. And it's pretty much uses Knuckles' ability anyways. To arrive to fight the boss, this is the Master Runner room from Sonic 3. I love this Knuckles when you're trying to fight for the Master Runner back at Dr. Robotnik. While the Master of the Harpo Heavy started to steal it. This fight is pretty cool. The Master uses the Master Emerald for his source of power to fight Knuckles. You pretty much hit him like other ones until he down. Now on to Metallic Madness Sound. We're almost done with this game, son, don't worry. We'll beat it and then go get some ice cream. Now, Act 1 of Metallic Madness Zone has some pretty cool, interesting uh, mechanics that I thought were pretty clever, though. I mean, do you remember those um, machines, though, that you had to jump off of before it makes you sure you won't get hit? Now, these things, though, can actually bounce you right out into the background. <laughs> And there's lasers that shrinking we grow you, which were also in Sonic DD. I thought it were also unique. Seeing Chibi, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. It's time to go to the first boss. And this one's the Sonic 1 final boss. Oh! <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Never expected that to happen. What's place like the same though, except this one has a second face where um this happens. <laughs> You have to follow a path though to see though where Robotnik would be exposed to you. I mean, if Robotnik is on there, you have to hit it. It's now time to go to Act 2. Act 2 Metallic Madness Zone. It's the zone that used the uh, strength laser stages the most, which I talked about in Act 1. Including the boss for Act 2. The boss for Act 2. She had a tiny version of itself though, which is also each every single Sonic boss from all the free Sonic games. They even bought out a um, robotic fake Amy. It's hard to uh, destroy it, but be careful though if he doesn't get you. You will take damage. It's on to the um, next stage. This is Titanic Monarch Zone, the last four new zones in the game. Okay, now that I think about it, that's 12 zones, only four being new ones, eight being reimagined old zones. Well, I wish there were more than four new zones in the game. This zone has some cool, interesting new gimmicks though, with some new and old enemies thrown into the mix. You got these missile drones that target onto you, take all your wings, wild blowing turtles that acts like the air things from flying battery zone. It's the electric stuff that I hate. <gasps> God damn! No! But we even have these things from the Sonic 3 bonus stages, which I had trouble doing as a child. I mean, seriously. Look, how, how do you even figure out that you're supposed to um, press. Uh, how are you supposed to even know that? We are supposed. Okay, I think it's time to go on to the boss right now. Now this boss for this act is actually a really interesting one. This boss is kind of like a elevator stage style. It has these um, balls all the way around them. If you hit him, one of the balls pop and there's um, spikes that come out. It's kind of hard to see. And then when you just throw all the spikes, so it, it throws the elevator up and down. This is kind of actually really hard to play in the knuckles. Can't, he can't jump high like Sonic or Tails. It's time to go on to Act 2. Okay, here we are into the final act. This... Okay, this is gonna be really tough to explain this one. Okay, when you enter it though, you uh, you found like these uh, weird purple portals. And then when you go in there, it takes you to a different part of the stage. And the stage play differently though, although except it has some portals though. But you have to be careful of trying not to touch it because if you touch it though, you probably are going to go back to where the um, portal teleported you to. I mean, it's a really nice little challenge though for you, I admit. And a little interest too. It throws all these um, interesting mechanics though, including these um, new interesting enemies though. So after you uh, enter all four portals, you came across this huge gigantic portal which takes you to the final boss. Now it's time to get to the final boss, I suppose. Get to this room, and then Robotnik starts spawning with this um huge, big, huge robot. This boss here has some of the most challenging and frustrating fight I find. This boss has a um shield. The only way to hit him is when the boss has electric shock, and you have to try to hit him before shields go back up. So. the start of that, there is these uh hardball and heavy mini boss. So I'm gonna need to be completely obvious to frustrating and hard because this part where it barely even leaves you rings. Which Bullshit. They shouldn't be even here anyways. Why can't we just uh, fight Dr. Eggman and be it in a bit? I mean... <sighs> well, you get extra hit costs and one of these set things to break up if you hit him enough. Pretty nice, but also cheating though. Anyways, we finished Robotnik though. Get out of here though before the thing explodes. It's a gigantic robot. Robot destroyed and the world's at peace again. Although, this is not the good ending. If you want to get the good ending, you have to play a Sonic, collect all the emeralds, and then go to the Planet Monarch Zone Act 2 and fight the boss. I mean, you can actually uh, replace some of the level so again and get all the emeralds. This game saves the rest of the animals that you collected and allows you to complete the game again though perfectly though, even if you have a safe station. Anyways, if you did it again though with all the emeralds, and then you get to fight the true Final boss. The 
boss fight here is pretty tough and also funny to use Tyson. You fight both the hard balloon heavy master and Robotnik riding on his own machine, fighting only the Ruby that powers their mechanical machine while playing as Super Sonic. The hard balloon heavy shoots these beams at you, making you lose all your range to or knock you away. But then does this uh, push you move dude, that pushes you away. All you have to do is hit the hard boy heavy dome in right perfect time and hit Robotnik. Hit him a couple of times equally and then beat them all and get the special new ending. Let's take a look at the extra content this game has. Why? This game has a lot of content for a $20 game. There's a timer tech mode that you can play the act that you've beaten with the fastest time without needing to fight a boss. There's even this cool little uh, feature though which I like though. I mean, if you press a button though on your controller, you actually start from the beginning of the last level. There's these metallic things that I mentioned that you can earn from the boost spear station Yet that gives you a lot of cool interest if you Enough of these, so do we give some extra things you could play in the game? You can have the Sonic moves with Sonic Green and Knuckles, and it's from Sonic CD. You can even have Knuckles to play as your partner in the game. Playing as two, well, you can have Knuckles with you. Playing as a Knuckles, then you can also have Knuckles with you too. Then you're in a debug mode, which I was finally able to unlock recently, and oh my god, debug mode is amazing. Debug mode literally placed some stuff into the environments. Earlier, his uh, capsule, rings, enemies, balls, and even some unused stuff that was left in the game. To use debug mode, all you have to do is press the X button on your controller or whatever button was used on your keyboard to activate debug mode. With debug mode, you could place as how many enemies or how many rings you can place in there. If you want to learn how to use debug mode, here's some of the controls. A button lets you switch to objects, and the Y button lets you place it. The B button lets you switch types of object you want to put in the game. There are probably other stuff that can be affected with it too, but debug mode is not really free to get. There's a catch though. The only way you can get debug mode is to get 16 medallions to lock it. You can even play the boost station after collecting more of the medallions. But that doesn't mean that debug mode will let you place object. No. If you select this weird blue circle with an S on it, it will actually let you see a lot of stuff about how the levels are designed. It will even show you some weird interesting secrets that this game does. Wait, I almost forgot one more thing. You can turn to supersonic. Super Care and Hyper Knuckles. After collecting all the seven Chaos Emeralds, all you have to do is to collect 50 rings, and then you can turn to Super Sonic by jumping and pushing a button and showing on the screen. <laughs> this will make you invisible as long as you have rings. If you run out of rings, you go back to normal and die, get hit again. Much like a cheat game for people who are noobs to the game, but I don't really care about this. Sonic Menu is an awesome game that costs $20 with a lot of content and can show how fans and hackers can make together for their love for the franchise. Sonic Menu is not a ROM hack or fan game, but a love letter to the classic Sega Genesis games and for the fans of classic Sonic. The game isn't really that perfect though. This game does have irritably difficulty spikes though during the boss fights and um, some of the stages, but it's not much big of a uh, hassle though. Because this game is worthy of a um, pass when the stages are just so memorable and so distinct. And now, without further ado, it's time to uh, give this game a review. If you're wondering what score I'll give for this game. Well, here he is. Sonic Mania for the Sonic Forces video will be right back after these messages. I am not 
not a pedophile. Now back to the video. It is now time to look at Sonic Forces, the second Sonic game released in 2017 that came out in the February 7 made by Sonic Team, three months after Sonic Mania was released. The game started development in 2013 that was like two years before the development of Sonic Mania. As you all might be aware, both Sonic games were announced during the Sonic's 25th anniversary livestream special. Sonic Watch, watch right, right here, right here. Well anyways, during the livestream, the two Sonic games like Sonic Mania and Sonic Forza were both announced. Sonic Forza was originally titled Project Sonic 2017, which made a lot of people surprised and happy that we were getting a classic Sonic game and another one that plays like Sonic Generation. It's been like 5 years since we got a game like that, and that was 6 years ago. And then at a later date, there was rumor on the internet that there was going to be a third playable character for the game. The game though didn't announce that it was going to be called Sonic Forces. And then later on, the third playable character was announced, and it was... Oh god, I don't want to be the one to do this. Okay, um, Phil, um, 3D Sonic games aren't doing too well. Uh, I think it's time. Surely. Surely you can't mean it. I'm sorry, sir, but I mean it. Plan OC. No. No, 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 please. Please. Anything but this. Downward spiral, 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 Yes, what a bad idea that was. The third character that was announced for the game is your own custom hero. This thing has made the internet gone really crazy about. I mean, it's not that much of a bad idea to have your own custom hero in a video game. I mean, take a look at Splatoon 1 and 2. There are inklings that uh, you can customize, get weapons, etc. This game was made for this. The reason why this game was great. There is also only one way to work. Take a look at South Park, the Sickle Troop, and the Fractured Butthole. Both games were made to have custom heroes because they want to actually make the game feel like your character feel like you're in the actual show. But for Sonic Forces, this is even fit for the game. Why would they do this? Why would the custom hero be there? Is there any reason it happened in there? I mean, if the custom hero was in Sonic Adventure 2, it would be interesting and fun because your hero is in this group fighting with Big Man, Shadow, and Rouge. But when you're making a game at this year, things look at controversial. Enough wasted time, let's go on with the story. By the way, this game was given to me as a by Starman. Thank you. Sonic, how I hate him. And all of that loathing has been focused into this invincible instrument of destruction. Every defeat, every humiliation at the hedgehog's hand. Oh, you don't want to skip this, dude. This is sweet. Will be returned a thousandfold by my unstoppable creation. No, trust me, you want to hear all of this. This is my dream come true. Will you stop interrupting, please? With this invention, I can expand the Eggman Empire. Of okay, now you're just being a dick, Brad. Across the globe and conquer the world. <laughs> the boss means business. Okay, okay, fine, you can skip cutscenes if you really want to, fucking asshole. Okay, let's get to the actual real story. The game starts out with a custom room, Eggman talking about how Sonic has defeated him a million times with his two henchmen, Orpa and Cuba. You get the infinite beginning of the cutscene. Well, I say infinite, as I mean to say, the mysterious creature. And then after that, we're thrown into Green Hill Zone as Monarch Sonic. I I'm sorry, what? What the fuck was that? Why am he immediately thrown to Green Hill Zone? Should we be in the, um, city instead? In fact, Sonic should start in Park Avenue, then we play Green Hill Zone as Mono Sonic. But that's just the beginning. You immediately start running, you get this stupid hit thing stopping your progress if you touch it. Like, what the hell, man? I just want to play the game! Don't put his right where I'm moving. There's just a lot of these you go around, not just the first stage, but also in any other stages. Just let me play the damn game! 
Hill's looking a lot more like Sand Hill right now. Yeah, no shit, son. Now this stage has both 2D and 3D parts in the modern stages, like, you know, what have. 2D stage I enjoyed in the stage, even though I had two path for each to go. But I enjoyed nonetheless. I won't talk about the end of the stage, it's pretty, uh, lame. I have now completed the stage, and let's see what we're gonna get I got. Oh, okay then. Okay, now we're in Park Avenue, and we were just in Green Hill Zone. How the hell did we get to Green Hill Zone 2? Oh, wait, hang on, it's like Sonic's fast. And so, after Sonic defeated one of Dr. Robotnik's henchmen, Tails tried to get the people to escape, though. Sonic gets into a pickle with actually Shadow the Hedgehog, Metal Sonic, Chaos, and Savik. Oh yeah, and the mysterious creature. The mysterious creature actually beat Sonic's ass really good while the others join in too. Chance is just sitting there doing jack shit. So they all beat in Sonic into the mission, and now the cutscene ends. And then there's text saying, with Sonic defeat the Eggman quickly took over. Wait, what? It didn't say they kill Sonic. No way. What? And now another cutscene comes into play to with Victor Crocodile complaining about the war going on. And Silver for Sonic 06 is here, what? So this thing has been going around for six months, and they're just doing nothing for this. Oh, great, how amazing. Not everyone is terrified. Isn't a new recruit joining us today? Oh, yeah, there's a new recruit joining in the game. And after that cutscene, we get to customize our own hero. Ooh, sweet. Hey, I think I got a character to whip up here. <laughs> What's up, Doc? And now, after the customization, another cutscene appeals, and Knuckles introduces our main Ooh. character, and he gives us a fire whisper for a mission. I'm gonna get into the whisper later on in this review. And so after this, we get our level selector, but it's similar to the Sonic Unleashed's level selector of style. Like, after this cutscene, we get the gang talk to each other, and there's a lot of these in the game of playing. Anyways, Knuckles has news that Sonic is alive. I just received some incredible news! Sonic is alive! Anyways, we get to play the stage in a, as our custom hero, and we're playing Chemical Plant Zone. Hey, wait a minute. I thought we were playing Sonic Forces, not Sonic Generation. The second stage here isn't really much to talk about. I mean, you do play as a custom hero, which has a much different move though than Sonic does. It has the uh, Wispin weapon that you got from Knuckles. There is one thing though that the custom hero has that Sonic doesn't. He can actually grab onto a rear circle or hooks. There are two types of it. The red one is though where you have to uh, press the button to attach it on, which the yellow one forces you to attach it on. There's even also these quick time events though that's happened in the entire game, which seems to sound pretty bad, though, but it's the only thing it's just about is just pressing one button no at the correct time. Also another thing, there's even enemies zone in the game though where they're all grouped together for some reason. I mean, why would they all be grouped together though in a straight line? I mean, this is a fighting game. Do we really need all these enemies to get the S rank? I mean, the S rank isn't really hard enough to get if you're playing on easy or hard mode. I will talk about them later on. We get to another cutscene in the game. We see Tyrus trying to fix Omega, which got destroyed for some reason. We saw it Chaos. attack them, and then Classic Sonic come back to save Tails. Yes, they put Classic Sonic in this game too. <gasps> Wait, I'm sorry. Did you just say that Classic Sonic was from another dimension? Yes. Tails. Tails, you fucking retard. You do realize Classic Sonic is from the Sega Genesis game, right? He's a young Inferno of Sonic. Can't make bullshit up for no reason. It was stated in, in Sonic Generation. Do you know how you got here? Well, Tails, I was wondering how you got here too. And now it's time to move on to stage three, City Ghost Town. Gee, that's a really shitty ass name. And now we get the chance to finally play Classic Sonic. And while we were playing as Classic Sonic, Tails is also helping us to get it. You know what? I actually really like some of the stations though where we were communicating with only Tails. I mean, we haven't seen a Classic Sonic in a modern Tails companionship. Classic Sonic though plays just like how he did though in the old games. Although, except there's some couple of things though that is wrong with him. Classic Sonic doesn't really uh, run as fast as he did. Sometimes though, he's 
usually uh, stops and slopes and personally you can usually do the charging spin dash move because uh, they decided to remove that in this game but you do have the drop dash ability all you have to do just like in sonic mania is jump and hold the a button now Although there is a couple of things though that I don't like about the class of Sonic Stages and it's power up. The speed shoes though doesn't really last for very long though. Why did they decide to shorten the speed shoes for some reason? The other games though didn't have their speed shoe power up shortened. Why did this one shorten though? The visibility power up kind of really fine and they even play the Sega Genesis version of the fist bump theme. I mean the fist bump theme though for the game is really catchy though and good too. And the infinite theme for the game does sound really Epic and energy. Shadow, Shadow, you got a competition waiting for you. But with all of the classic stunning problems, though, that I will point out, let's go on to stage four Death Egg Prison Hall. This is a stage where you'll be able to play as a custom hero where you have to go around the base station and find Sonic and get out of there. And after rebeating that stage, we see another cutscene with Sonic in prison. Torturing Sonic just to pass the time. Oh, that's low, even for Eggman. <laughs> Huh, Sonic was torture knuckles? <laughs> yeah, like he's really fine, dude. No need to be concerned. And so after our cousin here does some stupid crap, Sonic will be able to get freed. And so we get to fight our first boss, Savic. Yay, I love Savic. He's the most memorable Sonic character. And I get to fight him first. Yay. The first boss we get to fight with Savik is actually really interesting and cool though seeing him fly on a um, big huge wasp. I mean the fight though is pretty much alright okay. I mean all he had to do was dodge one of the uh, wasp attacks or what their white buzz bomber enemies chasing you and blowing up for some reason. But if you really want to attack him though you have to wait for the perfect time and make sure you're out of the big huge wasp boss shadows. And so then come and attack on Savik though a couple of times and then watch Sonic beat the living shit out of him. And so the cutscene plays over with Savik disappearing and now we're going moving on to the next stage. Now this is a really uh, interesting level though that I like. You get to finally be able to uh, grind around space again. I mean Sonic Finch 2 did that uh, too. And you finally be able to fly on around on a spaceship. This is really interesting although the fun is cut short at when we find out though that the level ends after that. We get another cutscene where a cousin here is struggling to fight all the robots. And then Sonic the Hedgehog finally helps to save the day. I'm mostly his cousin here. And then we finally be able to escape and we get more talking from Knuckles and the team. Talking about a factory on Green Hill Zone. But this time it's a tag team stage. The taxi station is a game where you play as both Modern Sonic and your custom hero. I mean, it's a great idea to have a chance to play as both Modern Sonic and your character, but when you boil it down, you pretty much have both Sonic moves and your OC's moves, which means you pretty much have too much to grease for yourself. What I think they should have done in these taxi is to change how you balance what character you play. Okay, let's break it down. You start at the level of playing as Modern Sonic, and you are limited to only Sonic's moves. And you play as Modern Sonic until you get inside the factory, where you start switching to your custom hero. The custom hero is only limited to his moves, and then when it is almost time to beat the stage, your custom hero finally meets up with Modern Sonic. And then when you're about to leave, they get into a big huge pit with a huge wave of enemies trying to attack them. And then you'll finally be able to do the double boost. Shut the fuck up, mate. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You do this double boost. All you have to do is just push a button though on the screen and then bam. You're finally instantly uh, beating much of the stage though without uh, taking damage. I mean, you can't run out of boost, but uh, it doesn't even affect you when you take damage. Now we've beaten the stage and we're moving on to the next stage. Stage 8 in the Monostarna state in the Mr. Duma Illuminatus Forest. Well, this place linear part is really big. I can believe they made this use for this level with barely an effort. And there's a 2 d set. There is a 3D part where it's kind of like take it for each the Mario sliding set. Except to be a slide, you could just run over it. Well, yeah, we also get another quick time event in this. And this time, it's a big, huge, gigantic snake. Holy crap. I didn't expect it. Um, actually, you know what? I think everybody already did this joke before. And now we get to stage 9. And we'll finally be able to fight Infinite. Oh, yeah. Here comes Infinite. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, I hate to admit this since we're already starting, but this boss battle is actually really good. Ryan run on a big gigantic snake is really fun. <laughs> you run along this big huge gigantic snake trying to catch up to Infinite so you'd be able to home and attack on him. Infinite had these um, magical powers where he would try to add some obstacles in the way to hurt you, but I barely even hit those. Why? Because I'm a master. This isn't the only time you fight him. You fight him three times. Next stage is stage 10, and we'll play as Classic Sonic in Green Hill again. Yep, it's Sonic Generations 2 with your own original character creator. With this stage, it even shows how much Classic Sonic doesn't control very well. When Sonic jumps in the air, his momentum of speed slows down. You can't run up the slopes without needing to spin that or hit a speed boost. Also, for some odd reason, the devs here just thought it would be a great idea to have Spring buried deep underground so that Sonic won't have to jump anyways. <laughs> Lazy piece of shit. But I won't go into much details about it, but if you really want someone to go into deep details about Sonic's controls, go watch Super Goku Man's video on Sonic Forces. He does a much better job than I did. And so after we play another level of Green Hills, we get another cutscene with Infinite and Eggman having a conversation to destroy every random Ruby prototype. Do you know that Ruby thing in Sonic Man that teleports everywhere to the past last six Sonic levels? Yeah, that is called the Phantom Ruby. And now we finally get to fight Dr. Eggman. Man. And now on to the boss. The classic Sonic boss is kind of like inspired by the Sonic 1 boss. I mean we did get one in Sonic Mania, but in this boss fight you think we might have defeated him, but nope! You get to fight the egg dragon again. That was in Sonic Unleashed and Generations. You jump on a big black rock that Eggman always keeps flicking her way while avoiding some of the uh, grapple from the green hill so. You hit him a couple of times and then you beat the level. We get another cutscene one Eggman says, In just three short days, my plan will eliminate the bothersome lot of you. Um, what? Did he just say in just three short days? What is this? Sonic Fortress Majora's Mask? And now for the next stage. This is a custom character stage in Park Avenue. You fight some enemies, they congratulate you for fighting Army of War Boss. Well, for some reason though, there are a couple of robots at the end of the stage. Can we go to the next stage? Huh? We're back to the Luminous Forest again? Huh, a casino forest? Classic Sonic? Alright then, I mean, when we enter Casino 4 Zone, this is pretty much like Casino Night Zone from Sonic 2. I mean, there is a Casino Night Zone in Sonic Generation, but it's on a free DS. Next game is the same stage where we all see, but in a water slide! Well, look at you, rookie! Having fun in the water? Uh, I wish I was. If this water slice didn't suck! Another cutscene plays after that. Your custom hero found this rear phantom ruby prototype that was knocked from infinite when Silver was fighting him. And Classic Sonic and Modern Tales finally meet your OC. Have we met before? No! And then fucking Modern Tales and Modern Sonic had reunited again. It's been generations since I've seen you. Oh, so Sonic knew who Classic Sonic was. Ha, <laughs> that's great. You never guessed that Classic Sonic was in another dimension. another dimension. Tails. So Tails told the gang that Eggman has a plan that will destroy everybody in the world in just three days. And that was the end of the cutscene. The next stage here is Sunset High Zone again. But we're playing as Modern Sonic. Finally. Finally. And this is stage 15. We're almost half done with the goddamn game. And they couldn't have Sonic being such a height earlier. Yes, there's Freddy Sage. Plus a couple of bonus stages for you to play. Now we come into Sunset Highway, just running normal. Like, it could have just be the uh, first level. Now we find a completed gate and we came across Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh boy! Oh boy, we're gonna fight Shadow the Gate. Whoa! Wait! What the fuck? Is that not Shadow? What? 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 Okay, so it turns out Infinite is making these clones of Sonic enemies that he fought in the past. Even Shadow. But for some reason, they don't get to fight the real Shadow in the entire game. At all. Not even Chaos for some reason. The only boss that you find in this game that Infinite created is Savage and Metal Sonic. Why is Chaos even in the game? I mean, he's a memorable Sonic boss character. He was the first boss too. But why didn't we get to fight him in the game? Is that too much effort for you to put him in here? Now it's time for stage 16, Metropolis. Exactly. That's why we're focusing on a full frontal assault on Metropolis. I'm calling it Operation Big Wave. 
percent of our forces have been wiped out, and we've lost contact with the rest. I mean, I won't lie though, I kind of do like the stage. Really cool and pretty, even though it's much like Grand Metropolis level in Sonic Heroes. Actually, you know what? How about we talk about the Wispins in this game? Do you guys know the uh, old Wisps from Sonic Colors? The Wisps were a main gimmick in Sonic Colors that help you progress through the levels. With the DS version, have have different kinds of Wisps. There are only two types of Wisps in Sonic Generation. Sonic Lost War has some new Wisps in the game, but they were shit. And nobody wanted to use them. Well, except the Indigo Wisp. I love that Wisp. There are seven types of Wispin weapons in the game. The first Wispin weapon we were going to look at is the first one we get from Knuckles. The Burst Wispin. This Wispin fires actual fire and destroys a couple of enemies easily. There are capsules that you can collect your Wispin if you got the right equipment for it. Fire Wispin that you collect lets you glow and fly into the the air, just like the one from the DS game. Wispin number two is the lightning wispin. This thing has a lightning whip that destroys a lot of enemies in its raid, with the weapon making you move a bit further. This one collects rain in a straight line and will also destroy enemies too, if you're lucky. Next one is Amy's blue hammer. Oops, I mean the cube hammer. This hammer makes enemy first into squares, which if you could use a hammer move again or run into the blue squares, it will give you extra range. Makes this my favorite. But the special attack you use if you collect the blue wisp makes Make sure hammer do this. Yeah, this one is pointless. The Astro Wispin is one of my favorite weapons. This weapon has extra cubes that follow you and copies your character's animation. This is actually a really nice touch. They attack and destroy a lot of enemies like an exploding bomb. Special attack used you after you collect the Inigo Wispin gives you great and visibility to enemies. It means you have a huge range of collecting rings. The Hover Wispin attack blows away your enemies with a shockwave. A special attack is just hovering in the air. It's much better than a fire wispin. The next wispin here is the most overpowered wispin. Say hello to the void wispin! The void wispin lets you shoot this big huge purple void and suck up anything it comes in contact with, including enemies, rings, and wisp. Well, the void wisp is the only uh, wisp that you uh, get after completing the game. When you uh, collect the uh, void wispin, you just uh, teleport it to wherever you want. Um, it's kind of like uh, unnecessary for it to use because you probably won't know where you teleport. The uh, drill was spindle I'm gonna talk about. I haven't really used a lot. I mean, it is kind of like the uh, respectable drill wisp from the Sonic Coast game, but I found this one might more troublesome. You do drill attack by tapping the right trigger button. All you have to do is keep hitting the trigger button or it won't work properly. And the special move that this drill wisp has is just, it's just the same move. The only thing that this move does is you drill into the ground, but you don't tap the uh, trigger button, you push the Y button. Um, I mean, I don't hate the Wispin, there's probably other people that I can use this uh, weapon much more better than I can. But for me, I could just use my uh, Ford Wispin, and it's in the go Wispin. Okay, back to the stage. When you uh, start the stage, it's pretty much, well, I'm not really gonna talk about this part. But what I really like about the uh, level though, is that Infinite actually interacts with you during the level. He uses a Phantom Rudy to cause real crazy stuff to happen during the stages. You start uh, seeing some crazy stuff happening to you, see you falling upwards and then downward, seeing you uh, running inside on buildings. Jeez, shit flying around. Also, it's gonna be a little nitpick here, but I'm so surprised with that nobody has a recording this audio. Nobody ever once ever talked about the uh, music in this stage. Well, why do I feel like I want to talk about the music for this stage? Well, the music for this stage sounds exactly like the other one from stage two, Chemical Plant Zone. Don't believe me? Here's a comparison. <laughs> Now it's time for the next stage, a boss battle, fighting infinite with your OC. The fight is just boring. You wish this stage was kind of like the uh, one of the bosses from Sonic Lost World. Infinite homing attack onto you and curse you with the uh, infinite pox. <laughs> well he does spawn some enemies and he has a second phase and well actually that's pretty much it. It's boring. And now it's time to return back to the good old chemical plant zone as classic Sonic. Oh yeah, 
This is the only stage where there's water, and for some reason they reduce the time you could be on the water. The stage is like a Sonic Generations one. This has the same enemies in the game with a couple of areas that was made to look like parts in Sonic 2 stages. Except when you reach a part where the two platforms move. Because when I fell down in the water after fall off a platform, there was fans under him. Are you effing kidding me? Are you afraid that people will complain about this part of the game? Anyways, the next stage here is not really only a tag team stage, but this is also a boss stage. But for some reason, this boss stage has red rings in there. Why are there red rings in this stage? You know what? I can enjoy it. This is probably a level that can actually work in one like this. Even the boss fight, kind of like pretty uh, interesting to fight him. Although, they say to uh, make Metal Sonic larger with the uh, Phantom Root. Um, I don't think I ever have to say this. I think Sonic said it better. Why would they bother making a fake out of something that already isn't real? Couldn't they just build more? That line in was astounding. Now after the VD Metal Sonic and Phantom Ruby type, Tails came out with a plan to stop Dr. Eggman's scheme. Custom Hero has to go back to Green Hill Zone so that Monarch can get into the chemical plant zone for Tails to hack the station to the death egg. Wait, how could Tails hack the station if he isn't with you? Now the entire stage uses 2D only. Now the only interesting things that happen in this stage is the crap robot changing you at the end. The next stage has monsters on and run through chemical plant zone. The level is pretty fine and I don't have anything else to talk about. But there is one thing I can say about this level. Hey fat, I found a computer room. Now after we hack the death egg zone, we go back to the death egg while we play as classic Sonic. I mean we hack the death egg zone but just running. I mean, that's probably might be the best way to hack something. Just run inside a big huge gigantic sphere. <laughs> now we finish the stage. And after this, we go back to Metropolis Zone. Now, in this stage, Marv something just, um, well, it's just a regular stage. Nothing interesting to say about this. Although, except for this part. Fuck this part. And after we do that, we get to play the next level. But, there's another cutscene that plays after that. Sonic Tails meets up with Eggman, and then Infinite spawns out this huge void called Null Space. Yep, that's what it's called. And both you and your OC. Okay, I'm getting sick and tired of calling OC. How about we just call it Bugs Bunny for the rest of this review? <laughs> Sonic gets pulled into the null space, but Buzz Bunny tries to get that Sonic out of the uh, radius. But they both got sucked in there anyways. Turns out Eggman had a backup power source. And now you're in null space. It's a really interesting place to be in here. You're just running, running, oh, you're doing an attack team move thing again. Well, that was great. How long has I got out on that? 18 seconds? Yep. That was null space, everybody! But for the rest of the stage, I mean, this stage is actually really not that bad. I mean, it has actual branching paths, other ways getting around the level with the uh, weapons you have. And they uh, play the uh, fist bump fiend in this stage. You know what? I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad anymore. You finally made a memorable level with Sonic Team. Well, the level designers of the game. And now we have five levels left. And the next place we're going to take back our home is the Eggman Empire. Another cutscene place with the entire team of OCs that we recently just got for some reason. Finding a group of phantoms. Look at this epic battle. Lord of the Rings cannot top that shit. And so we're getting through Infinite. Infinite has his magic powers, it, and then- Whoa! Where did that shot came from? Wait! Omega's back? Oh boy! That's amazing! Also, Omega's voice actually sounds like the original run from Sonic Heroes. Don't believe me? Just listen to them. Target we confirmed. Extermination mode initiated. Ultra Renegade Hall takes out robots. <laughs> But then, Infinite does the most insane thing that anyone has ever done. He makes his son! Yep, there's a Sonic Force of Majora's match, guys! Eggman is that crazy enough to kill everybody on this planet, including himself! But, all hope is not lost. Bugs Bunny actually has one of the Phantom Ruby prototypes, and he's the only one who could save us? That's amazing! And now it's time to finally play the stage. All you have to do in this level is watch out for a falling pit. You probably might need a fire wisp in 
weapon or a hover weapon if you want to have a good chance to finish this level. But there is a way to get up there. You can wall jump. Wow, that's amazing. I wonder how I found out. I found this out just by finding a hit thing. Oh, 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 oh. And so after that level is done, Bugs Bunny destroys the sun. The sun? It's gone! What? We play Mono Sonic this time and we run around the level. I mean, I don't think I have any interest to say about this one. Next. I, I, I can't. I can't believe I have to talk about it in this stage. I also skipped one stage because I'm going to talk about it after I refinish the boss. Now the next one is one of the last classic Sonic stage. Oh man, this this stage, I mean to be fair, it did start off very fine, but my god, they, they include a side-scrolling section. I mean, I mean it would, it would be fine if it's like in the game like Cuphead, but this is a Sonic game. Come on, dude. I mean, it wouldn't we would work like that since it's all about running fast. I mean, my god. At least this one is finally over. Okay, on to the next stage. This level has you running around inside the core of the fortress. Before some instantly killed offs, clear some robots that are out to kill you. Once you get inside the court, you have to destroy all of these free, um... Well, all you have to do is just homie attack on those things, or use your wispin to destroy them. Also, watch out for lasers. At the end of the stage, you do this tag team boost thing. That's pretty much it. Okay, okay. Now for the final boss. After Mono Sonic Classic Sonic Good Old Tales included Bugs Bunny meetup, Eggman showed up with his huge mech machine. <laughs> Come on, now what? Can we ever just win and have that be the end of it? Don't worry, Sonic. It will be the end if you finish this one boss. I didn't really understand this, but uh, the Phantom Ruby prototype of Sesso in the game says it had to have a power source to work. For some reason, we destroyed the uh, main source of the power. And now it turns out that the Phantom Ruby doesn't need a power source. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, can we just uh, get to the boss's finishes so we can end story mode? The boss starts off fine with classic Sonic stand out on disappearing and reappearing platforms. When Eggman is shooting these lasers to hurt you and throws rocks at you, you're gonna have to hit the rocks to uh, drain his health down. Also, Eggman throws a second wave of rocks. <laughs> I don't even know why. He's an idiot. So after defeating him in his first stage, we go to the next stage, and we we'll play as Bugs Bunny again. We're sitting on this big huge platform that Eggman could actually easily destroy with his lasers and smashing it with the uh, robotic fist. But to be able to damage him, all you have to do is wait for him to do this attack and then uh, attack his hand if you have the uh, fire whisper. But you actually had to uh, attack the uh, red spot. I didn't really know that at first time fighting him. Also, when you defeat him in his second phase, you thought it might be over, but nope! Eggman does his cop out again, and now we're fighting him in his third phase, which is just the Sonic Colors boss battle. This is the part of the stage where Mono Sonic, Classic Sonic, and Bugs Bunny start teaming up with him. All you have to do in this stage is to boost towards Eggman by smashing these blue blocks while avoiding some of his attacks, like the uh, laser one, this attack, and this weird attack. Also, for you who are wanting to know about the uh, music in this stage, no, this isn't really the music that plays during this boss fight. I actually uh, took it from another YouTuber who does an orchestrated version of the fist bump theme. This is what actually plays. I mean, I wouldn't have much of a problem myself though, but I was hoping for more like an orchestrated version of the fist bump theme. I mean, it could have been a much better boss fight with the fist bump theme, but whatever, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. Now you all notice I skipped age 27, which is the third and final infinite boss fight. I'm wondering why I skipped that. Well, to be honest, the boss fight is pretty much overwhelming. It could have been much better, but they just rehashed the Metal Sonic boss fight. This is exactly like that one Family Guy episode where Metal Sonic and Infinite tried to become Bloodbirders and Eggman got some too. Now, if they decided to switch it up and have Infinite being a final boss who has its own faces and attacks, it would be a great sign off to the game. Seriously, what the fuck is up with that? 
The Air to Infinite boss fight might be pretty overwhelming, but I kinda like the first one much more than the second and third one because, I mean, it's kinda weird as seeing Sonic riding on gigantic snake since after he just got eaten by one. And after you finish the final boss, you finally get the final cutscene. And so after we finished Eggman, all the phantom enemies started disappearing and we get to see our hero saying goodbye to classic Sonic again. Cheer up, Tails. I'm sure we'll run into him again. Oh, hell no! We're not seeing Classic oh, Sonic again! Do you hear me? That will not be another time, okay? Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Okay? Okay. Alright. So, we now finally get to see the end credits. Now, the song is playing during this is actually sounds really good. After the beginning again, I just got this pick happy smile on his face. Finally finishing the game has been on my accomplishments that I ever thought I had. The credits even played a fist bump beat. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna be real here. The story was dull. The game has 30 stages, yet it takes like this thing to be beaten in 3 hours. I mean, if it was for the extra content, I would have said the experience wasn't good enough. It is mediocre as people said it would be, but it has a lot of stuff that I enjoy, like the customization, a collection of wispins that are unique, and some extra levels that the game has. It is time to look at the extra content this game has. As you guys might be aware, this game has 5 red star rings in each and every stage. What do you do when you get 5 red star rings? Well, if you probably don't already know, there's actually customization that can unlock for your customizable hero. Getting all 5 red star rings will let you unlock those, including some uh, new challenges like collecting all 5 numbers. Yes, these things that were the Sonic Lost World, they're here right now. I mean, they added some new stuff though like the uh, new moonshine things or whatever they're called you have to get them quickly before they all disappear and that thing also gives you a new gear too well the red star rings doesn't really only let you unlock customization you can even unlock some extra levels to play and these extra levels don't have any red star rings or numbers or moonstones to collect so that's a good thing. Wait, does it call Moonstones? There are even some more levels when you completed enough levels assigned by each world you play. Here's an example. If you complete all the levels that starts in Green Hill Zone, there's a level that we're unlock. There are like five different kinds of levels. Cannon levels, Banish Parent levels, Bomb Block levels, Laser levels, Flying Pod levels, Plasma Cannon levels, and Reverse Block levels. Fire cannon levels are levels where you avoid fire that shoots out of the ground and you have to run to the end before you get burnt. The vanish petals are levels where you run onto these vanish petals that actually vanish you just stay on them for so long. There are some bomb block levels where you run into the entire level where the bomb blocks explode when you touch them. They don't explode immediately, just like the French block, they have a timer or to explode. These are hard and are the most challenging to have playing this game. The laser cannon levels have you afford these machines this huge laser. You have to wait for the laser until you're in the clear to get past. There is these levels called flying pod levels, that they have these machines that shoot spikes out to hurt you. Which in fact, these machines were once in Sonic Generations. They even shoot rings too when you touch them. The plasma cannon levels? Man, these are the levels where you afford these machines shooting plasma at you. There's the one of like laser cannon levels. And last but not least, the reverse block levels, where you can destroy these blocks that block your way to reverse the level. And that was all the secret levels and the extra levels. As the extra levels are out of the way, let's talk about the customization. As I promised, you can make your own custom hero goofy as you want him to. Also, there are some Splatoon clothes in there. Look at this. You can even save your costumes in the gallery. That's sweet! As a bonus after completing the game, you can make another hero for your collection. Types of ammo you make your character have different types of statuses that they have. Like for example, the bunny I picked has extended invisibility when he gets hit. Yep, that's the bunny. The wolf, which was shown in the reveal trailer, lets you drag arms towards you like rings. It's like having a magnet with you. The dog lets you have a couple of rings with you when you get yourself killed. The bear blows enemies away when you use the wire attacks, which I thought was badass. The cat holds on to some rings as to take you damage, although you do hold a couple of rings when you take damage in normal mode. The hedgehog, which is not as the ability, like when you get hit and lose your rings, they will last longer. And my personal favorite, the bird. This one lets you double jump in the air like Sonic does. You can't double jump when you all see when Sonic's with you. There's even more to collect. This game has actually a mission that lets you able to unlock even more costume. 
Like for example, getting an x-ray in the stage that gives you more costumes to collect. But there are other minutes that will unlock not only costumes, but more wispins for your collection with these special ability slots. Day. But there are some missions that are just... Just are stupid. Like who comes up with this shit? Boots in this stage? Finesse in stage 18? Slide in this stage? Come on, let's be honest here. These bitches are just so stupid and easy that a first grader can do them. But there is actually these one thing that I like that they put in. These things are called daily missions. Do you guys know the daily gifts thing in phone games? This is what a daily mission is in the game. They give you bonus points for the level you play. These are like regular missions, except they help you get an x-ray on the stage. I mean, look at this. I got an x-ray for almost all regular days. Not because it's just practice, because of the daily missions I do. I mean, I do really want to talk the ability slots in this game, but I'm just too overwhelmed to do it. And too much to do. I think it might be it for the extra content. And that's all the extra content has. There are two difficulties in the game that we can select for any gamer that plays any Sonic game or not. But the difficulties that they give you are absolute shit. The difficulty is just normal mode and hard mode. I chose the normal mode and this mode has you play the game normal. And it's critical for people who have to play a Sonic game. And you can only hold on to 100 rings in each stage. I then decided to play the game on hard mode. It's not even different from normal mode. I was super full of challenge, but the only thing hard mode does is let you keep the 99 rings and let you have your time recorded. This is terrible, right? And if you guys think we will go into episode shadow for this review, this is a DLC. I mean, I don't like to talk about DLC because it's not really something interesting you want to do for the main story mode. DLC is something extra though that you can do to... Okay, fine. I'll talk about Episode Shadow. Episode Shadow has you playing as Shadow the Hedgehog. And Shadow's not much different from Sonic aside for the special homing attack. Now for story mode, it takes place a month before Eggman took over the world. Rouge and Shadow were both talking about Eggman's secret weapon when Rouge tells Shadow to go to Park Avenue to find where Omega is. First stage you start in this episode. The immediate you enter the stage, this is exactly the same stage as Sonic stages. The only difference is that there are obstacles that are in your way. Have some level a lot harder. Although this stage is actually really easy. While traversing the level, you start to lose contact with Omega with static indicating what is happening to him. And so after finishing that level, you and Infinite start talking to each other when Infinite says that Omega got destroyed. Yes, no cutscene. We don't even get to see cutscene and Infinite destroying Omega. Lazy. We didn't get a flashback to a couple of months ago we get to play another level. This is the same level as the custom hero stage. I mean the only thing they decided to include in this stage is a golden motor I mean, one of the motorbikes actually had a red star ring in it. But after we finished the level, we actually got a new cutscene for this episode. It shows that Infinite was actually a creature that was working with Eggman before he was powerful. We didn't even get to see Infinite's normal face for some reason. Shadow kissed Infinite's ass and he said to him, Don't show your pathetic face around me ever again. Oh damn, Shadow, you better slow down there. That's quite edgy. And now we see Infinite put on the mask. And then after that, more Infinite talking. You see the powers and then we get teleported to Green Hill Zone. This. <clears throat> oh, brother. I hate to lie about this, but this level is actually really good. Although the two levels in this episode were disappointing. This level was actually really fun. I mean, you got a lot of obstacles that you have to be careful with. Other ways to traversing the level. I mean, you will die in this level a couple of times. There is so much I can talk about this stage, but let's get some out of the way. There is some illusion that caused you to hear Rube say that Omega didn't die with Omega saying what Infinite said. I am not weak. And now we get back to Sunset Avenue, and Infinite talks to Saturn on how his powers will destroy Sonic. Although he uses it only a couple of times in the stage. He's supposed to show out of nowhere, and Infinite escapes. We didn't get in contact with Rouge, and Shadow kept his all in secret to himself. And Rouge talked to Shadow for a little bit. And then she said, But it's nothing to worry about. We've got the advantage now. <sighs> Shadow, this is not good. 
Hurry, get over there. So after the conversation, we act got another cutscene. And no, it's not actually a new We get replayed the second cutscene that shows Sonic getting killed by Infinite, and that was episode Shadow. No, I'm being serious. This DLC has only three stages. Maybe you guys should start thinking before releasing another DLC for this game earlier. I mean the Octor expansion released this year, and it only has half 80 missions. 80! That's even more than how many levels Splatoon 1 or 2 have combined! Actually, you know what? Episode Shadow is stupid. It's boring and lazy. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna play Episode Toilet, baby! Sonic Forces is pretty much a mediocre game. It has a lot of content like Sonic Mania does, but not something that everybody will remember. It may be fun for a couple of hours, but not something you want to replay after completing it. But the game was actually was a development for 4 years, right? Why does the game have so many levels that only ends like in minutes? Wait, Sonic Forces was actually in development for just a year? Yeah, so it turns out that Sonic Forces was actually in development for 4 years. What actually happened in 4 years, Sonic Team began development for the Hedgehog engine in 2013 to 2014. And then they started doing a concept for Sonic Forces for 2014 to 2016. And then 2016 to 2017, they actually decided to develop the game. Oh brother. I mean, I gotta hand it to the team that helped design the game. At least isn't it really that buggy or glitchy when playing the levels. At least this game doesn't crash constantly when entering a level and exiting a level. Now, I think it's time to review this game. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, what score am I gonna give this game? Are you gonna give this game a 4 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10? Well, here's the score. Now I know what you're gonna ask, is the Sonic fan base the worst video game fan base in existence? There seems to become this trend of video games like Sonic Hedgehog that has a massive following with games either good or bad having this massive haste around it. As you all know, Sonic Hedgehog is kinda like those. But I'm not saying you ain't supposed to like it. You're allowed to like what you like. That's fine with me. All I'm saying is, please don't be a fucking cuck about it. Sonic has been one of those franchises that has been getting more hate than any fanbase to ever know. The hate with games either good or bad would be classified as terrible. Even the classic Sega Genesis Sonic games have been known to get hate too. Why yes, the classic Sonic games have problems, I admit it. I don't like how you have to finish a game with all the Chaos Emeralds in one sitting while also playing these crappy special stages to get all the Chaos Emeralds. But are they classified as terrible? No, they're not. What I want people to get from this is, the Sonic Famous is not just cringe. It's more than just that. If you have been on the internet for a while, you probably have heard of ROM hacks. There are a lot of ROM hacks based on Sonic games. Some may be uh, transformative, some may be fan games, and some are actually new and improvements over the original. And that doesn't really mean that the new games doesn't have the same treatment. I mean, look at this. Look at what this community did for Sonic Mania. They have made a lot of great fun stuff for you to do. They have made some new levels, new stage gimmicks, and some even more amazing stuff for you to do. And that doesn't mean Sonic Forces doesn't have the same treatment as that. No, they have made levels in Sonic Forces a lot harder than how it was in the original games. The community have made mods where they actually replaced Sonic the Hedgehog with somebody else from a Sonic game. Maybe even from a different game made by Sega. Or maybe a game not made by Sega. And such as that, people held much love for the Sonic franchise. And for Sega. I mean, Sonic has been getting a lot of ROM hacks, unlike other Sega franchises. But what about the 3D games? Well, they too have been giving some love and support. Yet, even though they have problems, they still get love and support too, from everybody. So Sega wanted to expand their horizon with a lot of characters from like the TV series, 
comic books, and other sorts of media. But there could be something likable to see for these characters. It's not like the majority is garbage, but even though sometimes fan bases are good, sometimes fan bases can even destroy once a beloved great game that they have. Hype culture as a whole has the ability to turn the door of fans into people non-stop complaining because they were blind by its magnificence to begin with, slowly realizing the cracks the game has. Hey Dad, can I talk to you about something? Alright little Sally, what is it? You know the two Sonic games you brought me? Okay. Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces. I said that Sonic Mania was my favorite Sonic that I've played in my life after I beat it. Alright. See, I gave Sonic Mania a 10 out of 10, you see? Okay. Yes, a common review say it's just the best Sonic game of the series, but the best game in our generation. <laughs> Well, you do realize you're being dense, right? Uh. No, Dad, that's some stupid word you just made up. Please stop making these stupid words up. Okay, first of all, I am not making these words up. That is an actual word in the dictionary. And second, why don't you just write another review for both games where you are honest about the game's criticism? No way, Dad. If I do that, that will make people think I am being dishonest. Oh, uh, by the way, have you seen my Sonic vs. character I made in the game? She's a purple cat with blue claws with pink shoes, and her name is Castrophobic. That's pronounced as a cat as a catastrophobic. Going back to the review section for the video, this is why I've been critical to Sonic Forces a little bit more than Sonic Mania, because people were blinded by Sonic Mania's austerial music. Well, what about the negative side? What about the people that doesn't like Sonic anymore? Well, the truth is, the people who didn't like Sonic used to like Sonic, just like how they liked Mario. But unlike Mario, they stopped enjoying Sonic after one catastrophe happened. Two Sonic games were made. The first one was Shadow the Hedgehog, an edgy video game all about Shadow. It was much different than how Sonic was. It included side missions that you have to do. You can either go for the Chaos Emerald, help Sonic the Hedgehog, or help the evil Secret Mastermind. And the other one, Sonic 2006. This game was bad enough to split the community apart. The levels were glitchy, bad cutscenes, bad gameplay, and everything. <laughs> and this has caused people to despise. I mean despise the Sonic games, including the good old classic games. You know what, I am so happy that we finally got another Sonic game, like the Sega Genesis game. It would have been a miracle to have another Sonic game like Sonic Mania, but Sonic Mania doesn't even need its own sequel, but it can be a sequel like Sonic Mania, and we can hope for another one in a couple years, since there are a lot of major reviews, demands for another sequel, and how many copies is sold. This is the reason why I decided to make this review, because I absolutely adore Sonic Mania. Having an art style just like how Sega Genesis game like, it's amazing that Chris and Whitehead made something like this. Hell, this game even had me hooked up on some classic Sega Genesis games immediately. The game is simple, it has a beginning, and it has an end. And it's very conclusive. If you want more of that, there's other stuff you could check out by playing cooperative mode with your friends, playing with Sonic Details with your pal as Tail for 2 player, doing time trials, and etc. I know I sound like a broken record here, but form your own opinion. Experience both games for yourself. If you think either Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces, or both of them are good games, they're good, power to you. If you think both of the games are bad, then be vocal about your opinion, but be sure you know what you're saying and have done some proper research. But there is one thing at fact, Christian Whitehead and his team put their heart and soul into Sonic Mania and has paid out fantastically. And these guys have my full respect because since these guys were clearly people who were just regular fans of the game series and you knew that making a whole entire game from scratch is going to be a painstakingly process, they enjoyed it nonetheless. We want good games like Sonic Mania to age like a fine wine, something to remember how fans of a franchise can make amazing video games and how their styles can help a franchise out. Not how Sammy Classic Sonic fan is complaining about how the fans are completely displeased about the OC creation in the Sonic Forces game while the fans actually decided to ask for it. Although, that would be pretty funny. Hello there.
Thanks you all for making it to the end of the video. I mean, to be real here, you're probably just new to this channel and just watching a couple of Sonic videos. And you're all wondering, hmm, I wonder what this kid does. i never seen a video like this before from him. Well, that is true. I make Splatoon Gmon animations. If you really like those, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. But some of you might be wondering why I decided to make this video. Well, to be honest here, I was kind of like stuck in this um, creation rot. After working on Sploosh 4 for so long and waiting for my other friends to finishing their part, I kind of like um, I mean, working on a video and then waiting for your friends to start finishing their parts, it's going to be really tiring and boring. So you got either two choices keep working on the same video for so long where people s will start losing interest in watching your channel or you take a step back take a brief or start excited to make something new and fresh now this isn't really the video to become like the uh, sonic christ to help everybody I mean, there's a lot of things wrong with this video. I recently decided to use a different microphone than the one I used. I recently got a Blue Snowball microphone in December of 2017, and I didn't feel like I wanted to re-record all the same stuff I did off of my old laptop computer. So I decided to keep it in. Not only that, the video was uh, kind of badly pasted, and I kind of did uh, skip a lot of things so about some of the stages from both games and I skipped Sonic Forces SOS missions because I didn't feel like I wanted to do it. But please keep in mind, this is my very first time ever doing a review of a video game or most importantly two video games. I have never ever reviewed a game in my entire life. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I didn't want him to like make some kind of like a uh, video where I talk about uh, one of the games Sonic Forces where I you know, own my complaints to tell everybody though that the game is actually bad though and everything blah blah blah. No, I really want to look in full in depth of two Sonic games, see what I like about both of them and why I don't. One of the helps I have though is one of my friends, Lizzie the Radical 15 and Ghost of Time 1. They both did an amazing job forcing the um, little girl, which is Hat Kid, and his dad. You can check out both of their channels too in the description. They do animations like I did. Well, I mean, Ghost of Time does the source filmmaker animations. Although, you'd be lucky because it won't talk about. <sighs> what? What the fuck? And it's so unfortunate for me talking about the Sonic Force space since you already heard it a million times. I'm not really sure if I really wanted to include that in the parses. A lot of people were talking about the fan base, which uh, was a lot more better than how I did it. But I felt like I needed to say something because game fans are not becoming a constant topic thanks to explosions of everything. And you got everybody talking about how Sonic is the worst thing ever in Sega. Just. So fucking annoying. Please stop saying that. Overall, I hope you enjoy. This is not the 9k subscriber special video, cause I already planned a video for that. So that's all I have to say. I'm not really sure how to conclude this video, so I'm just gonna read a quote from Sonic Heroes. Alright men, let's get let's ready to do, do this. this. We'll show that creep the real, real superpower teamwork! teamwork.